is a very good. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sarah Griffin. I'll be your Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher for the evening. Um, I don't have any slides, uh, but I do have some facts. Um, this is a trifecta of personal horror, history, and scientific information um, about a common phenomenon called sleep paralysis. Um, has anybody here ever experienced it? Yeah. Can I get a, like a, a, a noise or like a hand? Oh, loads of you, wonderful. Uh, can I see everyone who hasn't? Oh, you've got it all ahead of you. Um, so, the first time it happened, I was on a midday bus from Dublin to Galway, call it sometime in 2010. Back then, I commuted across the country, uh, the country several times a week, studying in the West, maintaining a life in Dublin. I know every bump in the motorway that threads the belly of this country. On this particular afternoon, the bus was empty, so I kicked off my sneakers and put, I'm the worst, uh, I kicked off my sneakers and put my knees up to my chin and curled up to sleep. Many of my cross-country voyages that year were upright, tense, too close to a stranger to relax, but the days when the bus was empty was a gift. I don't remember falling asleep there in the gentle hum of the journey, but when I came to, I was paralyzed. Uh, the deadening sensation of unconsciousness was still in my arms, my legs, the muscles in my face, but my heart beat hard and loud as though on an escape mission. My mind was very much awake, convinced that this strange upright position, almost fetal, was how the paramedics would retrieve my body from the bus, carrying me into an ambulance, dead, obviously dead, uh, while I couldn't tell them that I was still there beneath a thick and stupid coat of flesh and bone, I imagined myself buried, but no. Like, this wasn't how I was going to be found. Under no circumstances, I would shake this weird mystery off myself. My eyes were open. I could kind of move my tongue, even though it was heavy in my mouth. I focused extremely hard on wiggling my toes, summoning Uma Thurman and Kill Bill as my spirit guide back to the realm of the living. That's not a fucking joke, and it worked. Um, stretch by stretch, my body woke itself uh, through some strange haze of chemical sleep, my heart battering its way out of me with relief rather than terror. A cursory Google named this strange thing sleep paralysis, a common physiological phenomenon during which the sleeper's brain wakes up before their body, or their body goes asleep before their brain. Shh, now, Wikipedia reassured me, you aren't possessed <laughs> or terminally ill. It just happens, uh, it happens to just about everyone once or maybe twice in a lifetime. A spooky little badge of honor. Uh, let me tell you about the time. No more than this, surely. An achievement unlocked. I reckoned I'd had my one tango with sleep paralysis. I was wrong. Before I get into that, uh, here is some good news. Uh, WebMD, where all self-diagnosis goes to convince itself it has a brain tumor, uh, assures us that sleep paralysis is not generally a sign of a deep underlying problem. Great news. It is just something cruel and strange that crawls out of the night to inflict itself on us. Even, though it even if it feels like death, it absolutely isn't. So great news. Uh, in fact, not only does it, f does it feel like death, uh, it's often reported to feel like a paranormal experience, and a lot of lore around monsters of the night comes directly from historical accounts of sleep paralysis. Most often, sleepers report uh, the distinct sensation of a creature or demon sitting on their chest, <coughs> peering down at them uh, and or suppressing their breath. Sometimes people experience a presence in their bedroom, the feeling of being watched by a malevolent force, a crone at the end of their bed, a tall man in the corner, a cursory skim through the sleep paralysis reddit, because of course that there is a sleep paralysis reddit, uh, reads like a series of short horror stories describing dead relatives, crones and hags, and of course Slender Man chilling out in people's wardrobes while their limbs lose sensation and they try to scream for help only to discover that they can't make a sound. None of my experience have been, experiences have been this exciting, unfortunately. Uh, poor me. The first clinical report of sleep paralysis was given in 1876 by Silas Weir Mitchell. He published a case study focusing on two young male subjects, though there was some allusion to it in a 1942 book entitled The Anatomy of Sleep or The Art of Procuring Sound and a Refreshing Slumber at Will. What a title. Um, <laughs> in a section about a daytime nap gone awry and resulting in difficult... <laughs> um, and resulting in difficult respirations and extreme dread. Uh, Mitchell says, uh, the subject awakes to the consciousness of his environment, but is incapable of moving a muscle. <laughs> Lying, uh, his, his physical experience is uh, still asleep. Or to the, to the observer, he looks as though he's still asleep. He is really engaged in a struggle for movement, fraught with acute mental distress. But he could, uh, he, he, uh, he, could he but manage to stir, the spell would vanish instantly. 
If only you could move while it was happening to you. You can't. It's part of the name. Uh, but people have been exhibiting and recording this phenomenon for centuries. The earliest traces of writing about sleep paralysis, in fact, go all the way back to medieval Persia, the most significant of which but was, by, uh, was the Hidyat, written by Akwani uh, Bukhari in the year 983 AD. Like, that's, like, old. <laughs> uh, in his time, Akwani was known as the physician for the insane. He wrote, the night... Mare, no, this is important, night hyphen mare, not nightmare, nightmare, uh, is an introduction to epilepsy and is caused by the rising of vapors from the stomach to the brain. The disorder mostly affects people with cold temperament in the brain. Cold flows, flow, uh, sorry, cold blood flows in the brain and its vessels. The therapy includes bloodletting from a superficial vein of the arm and from the leg. Great. Uh, in 1664, a Dutch physician called Isbrand van Diemerbroek discussed it. Uh, it may even be a phenomenon from which the word nightmare itself was uh, originally stemmed. Uh, historically, the hyphen is used to distinguish between night nightmare, like a scary dream, and nightmare. You're paralyzed and there's something creeping all over you. Uh, the latter is paralysis. Um, so in 2015, <laughs> flash forward, <laughs> um, from a sunny week in July right through to December, I had sleep paralysis almost every single night without a break. Uh, I would lie in the bed and feel my body give way. Like I was in Lisbon on like a session holiday with nine people. <laughs> Gas. <laughs> uh, I'm like, oh, I can't, I, let's not. <laughs> Uh, I would lie in the bed and feel my body give way, deaden below me as my consciousness swam, my heart still thundering in that same get me out as was on the bus, someplace um, between Athlone and the West Coast. Uh, in a bed in Lisbon, sun kissed and wine soft, it, it began and it did not stop, night after night after night. Um, during this period, I was finishing my first novel under revolving and intense deadlines, uh, that which is a banana's luxury to be living in at all. Um, but I think for which some part of me wasn't at all ready. Uh, so the part of me I can assume was the one that lets me sleep. Uh, so there are two kinds of sleep paralysis, uh, and I am lucky enough to be a person who experiences both of them. Uh, they have great names too, uh, hypogogic and uh, hi uh, hypno, sorry, hypnagogic and hypnopompic. They sound like two sleepy Pokemon. <laughs> um, that's how you remember them. They're like the same one, but like yeah. slightly different versions of each other. <laughs> I bet you they'd be real cute. Uh, hypnagogic is the one that brings with it largely feelings of malevolence and dread, but no visions. It's the kind that hits you when you're just falling asleep. Normally, when a person is dozing off, their body and mind relax in sync. So by the time your body is switched off for the day, your brain has too. Sleep paralysis disrupts this relationship. Your brain is still awake and your body isn't. So you become aware that you can't move your body, which gives a distinct sensation of being trapped. Uh, hypnopompic, however, is the one where things get weird. During an REM cycle, which is the time of the night where we're dreaming, our skeletal muscles are paralyzed. This is called uh, REM uh, atonia. It's a safety break, and it stops us acting out our dreams, which is something people do. Uh, but that is a different lecture. Uh, hypnopompic sleep paralysis occurs when the sleeper's brain stumbles out of REM before the body does, leaving the body still paralyzed, but the brain kind of in a dream state, which can incur creepy visions. Or if we're really lucky, something called lucid dreaming. Do any of you lucid dream? Awesome. Um, which is where we feel like we're in control of the dreams that we're still experiencing. This happens uh, most often in the morning. I lose a dream around twice a week, but thankfully haven't had any slender men chilling in my wardrobe. Uh, I started lucid, lucid dreaming during that year in Galway. Um, so I'm blaming this all on the west of Ireland for being too magical. Um, <laughs> it's too wild and magical out there. Uh, However, when it uh, evolved <laughs> into uh, hypnagogic sleep paralysis, little level up, uh, my sleep cycle became bookended by the deeply weird. And during that particular summer autumn stretch in 2015, I pretty much stopped sleeping altogether. Um, funny how we acclimatize to things and how our bodies both rebel and settle within strange routines and circumstances. The world without sleep grew very slippery around me. Information somehow more difficult to, re to retain. Weight I had been struggling to lose for years, silently leaving my body at speed. Light felt different and time more textured. I really understood True Detective. <laughs> like, I hate it, but I totally understand it. <laughs> um, I was irritable and nervous all the time. 4, 5, 6 a.m., body frozen and unfrozen, perhaps two hours of something like sleep, get up again, get back to work. 
uh, drink a lot of coffee, uh, tremble under a false awakeness, how shallow the caffeine hit. You really learn how shallow caffeine is when you're, uh, when you're not sleeping at all. Uh, try to not to smoke any cigarettes, they do not help. Um, I went to the doctor one afternoon when I fell asleep at my desk in the middle of the afternoon, or rather my body fell asleep and I just panicked, locked in. My family GP told me to try and get a less stressful job and gave me some herbal sleeping tablets, which I did not take, and I didn't even think to ask him to let some blood out of my body for me. Uh, instead, I just lay, lay down at night and waited for, waited for it to happening, for the deadening to show up. I'd conquer it and I'd hold whatever sleeping hours I got, like precious gold, until they eventually, eventually, months later, multiplied into healthy rest. I had safe passage from the curse of this from January until February 2016, when the manuscript was out of my uh, hands and then in Galway again, uh, <laughs> escaping Dublin. <laughs> so beautiful. Uh, escaping Dublin for a night to haunt that sailor's knot of a city. I lay on a starched white rented bed, my partner snoring beside me, port drunk and very pleased. And there it was again. Outside, a cluster of students drank book fast and sang, legs dangling right where the carob splits, swan dappled into ocean. My chest heavy, my arms not my own, same again. Now, I'm used to it by this point. So when it comes, I have a way of solving it. Though largely it bodes for a night of wide awake listening to podcasts while the cat walks all over my body, I try not to sleep on my back. That brings it on. Um, Somehow though, uh, like many people who have sleep paralysis, I find myself waking up on my back anyway. So it's like your body readjusts and re-invites the sensation, even though you, while you're going asleep, are consciously trying to get rid of it, which is very odd. Uh, this is the defense against the dark arts bit. So my hypnagogic experiences are less common now, but when it's uh, likely to come over me, I can feel it coming like that weird thickness the air gets before a thunderstorm. Um, like a set of lights going off in a building, floor by floor. I can sense it rising through me before I'm helpless and I can't move. So when I feel the electricity dim, I get up out of bed and I take a small stroll. I take a flan around my house. <laughs> um, downstairs, up the stairs again. Hitting reset on the process of going asleep, lying back down, trying again from scratch. This is both uncomfortable, inconvenient, and very boring. But it's the only semi-sure way to defeat sleep paralysis when it comes on. The only other alternative is allowing it to loop through your system, Waking up enough to scroll your phone for a second won't reset the process. You have to get up and try again. Your body and your brain need to start completely from scratch. So some people you may know from the world who uh, also suffer from sleep paralysis um, and uh, other related parasomnias are Florence Welsh, Jennifer Aniston, Winston Churchill, Jimmy Kimmel, Kendall Jenner, a Jenner, Jenner, <laughs> Instagram, Kendall Jenner, and Katia Zalamakochva from RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, real. <laughs> I'm glad, you know, glad a few people know that is. So you'll probably get it some night too, those of you who haven't had it yet. It's, uh, it happens to most people once or twice. Um, so good luck. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's probably not a hag sitting in your wardrobe uh, or your chest or a tall man in a dark suit standing in the corner of your bedroom. You just have to get up out of bed and walk it off and hope for the best. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>